It's November the 7th and we're chasing uh, fish number six on the upper Mersey River, uh, quite a few kilometers above the park boundary above Maintenance Bridge. And we're picking up uh, this fish number six. It's uh, fair ways up river here uh, below Taylor Falls, but Reg right here is uh, picking up a faint signal on the radio receiver here. This fish spent the summer in the Ord Stillwater. And when did it start moving, Ridge? The last week in October, it made a move from the head of the Stillwater down to the top of Mill Falls. It come back and stayed two days at the foot of the Stillwater, and then it took off upriver. And it's just been coming up ever since. So it's probably now about eight kilometers above where it was uh, implanted with the radio transmitter. And this fish is uh, on the move for spawning, I would say. Uh, this fish will likely spawn if it hasn't already in the very near future. Reg and I are uh, sitting here watching uh, spawning. What you're going to see in the underwater video that you're going to view in a second is uh, a 20, around a 27 centimeter female brook trout that has selected a gravel bed which has some uh, upwelling to uh, oxygenate the eggs really well and she's probably got about 800 eggs that she's going to lay in that nest she will come in and lay maybe 50 eggs at a time and uh, she's by herself on that nest uh, but there's seven, six or seven maybe eight males that sort of surround her and jockey themselves into position fight amongst themselves to try to get in there to fertilize those eggs. So she'll lay maybe um, 50 eggs and then a male will scoot in and fertilize those with uh, his milt. It's November the 7th and we're tracking fish number 7, the uh, large 34 centimeter female sponsored by Trout Nova Scotia and fish number 4. Uh, it appears that both of these fish have spawned uh, about 4 kilometers above the park boundary at the mouth of um, where Baxter's Brook runs into the upper Mersey here. and. Um, they probably spawned a couple of days ago and those fish are now appear to be on their way back downstream and we're about two kilometers above the the park boundary here at this point on the upper Mersey and these fish are really moving fast. Uh, Ridge was here this morning and got a faint signal on one of these fish and now we're getting a, a very strong signal on on both of them. So these fish appear to be uh, moving downstream now that they've finished spawning. And we don't know where they'll end up, but that's what we'll be doing in the days to come, tracking those fish. 
It's uh, November 16th and we have uh, a couple of beautiful uh, spent or spawned out male brook trout here that we've implanted with radio transmitters. You can see the antenna coming out of the rear of that one. And uh, these came from Rogers Brook and we're going to uh, take them back down to Rogers Brook shortly and release them where they were caught. And we'll track these uh, two fish over the winter. These are fish number eight, fish number nine. Uh, two male fish caught here in Rogers Brook and uh, being released uh, back at this moment. Different sound. On Sunday, November the 14th, uh, fish number 240, which is our largest brook trout, she was up above the park to the north, up the Mersey River, and we couldn't pick up a signal, and here at noon on Sunday, I could get a faint signal from the viewing tower here, and on Sunday afternoon, Doug flew with the float plane, and this fish was positioned up on the west side of Indian Point, and yesterday morning at 8.10, she was up a kilometer up Aitken's Meadow Brook. So this fish has traveled 17.5 kilometers since last Sunday morning. We're tracking fish number six. And we're about six kilometers above the uh, park boundary on the Mersey River. Uh, we're in the truck here and it's uh, snowing outside. We've got a bit of a snowstorm going on here today. But uh, we're able to drive in here and uh, get a signal uh, from the truck and we're going to walk down to the uh, river in a few minutes to have a look but uh, that fish is in a pool uh, about six kilometers above the park boundary and it looks like it's probably going to spend the winter there because it hasn't moved from that location for a couple of weeks uh, uh, so far. This is the pool about six kilometers above the park boundary where the uh, fish is likely to spend the uh, winter. It's December the 12th and we're here in the viewing tower in Kedji National Park looking out over Kedji Lake and we're tracking fish number three which is on frequency 153.60 and we're getting a signal that when the float plane flew on the 28th of November the fish was over back of Freeman Island and it would appear that it's still holding there because we're getting a very faint signal here from the tower as you can see Kedji Lake is starting to ice in. In fact, it's pretty well, all the coves are frozen over. There's still some open water out there in the middle to the west. But other than that, we're, we're facing ice conditions at the present. It's January the 20th, and we're here at the viewing tower looking out over Kedji Lake and we're tracking our fish that are located out here in the lake. As you will note, there's no ice left in the lake which is unusual for this time of year and Sandy Bottom was ice free so our float plane pilot Doug Potter was able to get in the air today and he pinpointed 
the five fish that are all located out here in, in Kedgy Lake and spending the winter there. The whole, all of the five fish have moved somewhat since they were last pinpointed on the 28th of November. And, but they're still spending the winter here in the lake. The one has moved maybe as much as six or seven kilometers, but other than that, the rest have moved from one kilometer to, to maybe three. Here are the results of our first fall and winter's work. In early October, brook trout that have spent the summer in river refuges move relatively short distances in, in the river to spawning areas. The two female trout that summered in Kejimakujik Lake moved into the upper Mersey to spawn. Some trout made side trips before continuing on to spawning sites. The longest was 17 kilometers and involved another river system. In 2005, spawning began in early November. In the Mersey River, they appear to select sites for cold, well-oxygenated water up wells through clean gravel. Spawning was over by mid-November for those two big females. On November 16th, we radio tagged two male trout at Rogers Brook that had completed spawning. One moved a couple of days later in the Kejimakujik Lake. Returned to Rogers Brook on November 24th and then moved back to the lake on December 9th to spend the winter. The other fish moved out a couple of days but moved back to spend the winter in the brook. After spawning season, the three trout that had been in the river all summer and fall have actually stayed in there for the winter. The two big females moved back into Kejimakujik Lake to winter along with two other radio tag fish that had spent the summer in the west and the Little River. Okay. Hi, I'm Rich Beard. I'm a retired fly fishing guide 